Hello and welcome back to the Quadrus Legacy channel. In this video, we're going to explore how to create JWT tokens in Python using the PyJWT library. Alright, so let's begin here. First of all, what is JWT? JSON Web Tokens. That's what JWT stands for. But what exactly is this and why is it such a big deal? This is like the first thing that you hear whenever you Google how to implement an authentication website a system for my website or for my front end or for my back end. I mean, that's how I find found out anyway. I was creating a website, then I needed to implement an authentication system, and this is what literally everyone was recommending. So let me explain what JWT is, what these JSON web tokens are in the context of my website scenario. Basically, I needed a way to uh, verify the user. Okay, someone logs into my website, and I need a way to make sure that the requests that he sends to the website after logging in, that they actually come from him. I need to make sure that he is the one sending it, the guy who I verified, the user who has logged in, who has been authenticated by checking his username and password, I need to know that when this guy makes a request, such as uploading a file or downloading a file, or even something as simple as requesting data, or actually it's not that simple because it could be sensitive data, and you need to be sure that the guy who is requesting that data is actually the user, the an, an authenticated user. So that's what JWT tokens are used for. What you do basically is create one of these tokens when your user logs in and then you send it back to him and then the user keeps that token while he's logged in and every time he makes a request, he sends this token to the front end, uh, sorry, to the back end, to the server. Then the server, when it receives his request, for example, he wants some data. So the server takes a look at this request, uh, but then before it you know, services the request, it checks the token that the user sent. It then verifies it, it decodes it because it's encrypted, and then it verifies it. It makes sure it makes sure that, you know, this token was sent by that user. And the way it knows this is because this token contains this data. And you can see this over here. Uh, I wrote out all the code beforehand so that we could spend more time on explanation and less time writing code. So here's the payload uh, that comprises of the token. This is where we create the token, the encode function. This is the payload that the token contains. So when the server decrypts it, decrypts it then this is what it gets. So it, it has the username, it has the user ID, whoops, and it also has an, an expiry date because you don't want to give your user uh, an unlimited access token, okay? You want to give it, give it an expiry so that he has to, you know, uh, re-log in eventually and re-authenticate himself. So that's the idea behind expiry, but this is what basically the token is. You use this user information, okay? You take this user information, like the ID, username, non-sensitive data, okay? You, you don't put sensitive data in the payload just in case you lose that token or someone hacks it. So you put this data here, you encrypt it using this key over here. I just put something random in here. Okay, a string called secret key. Uh, more realistically, this would be a series of numbers and alphabets. Okay, but I just put this in here for now. So you then take this user information, encrypt it using this key, and then you create a token out of it. Okay, just you're basically using the user's information itself to create the token. So when the server decrypts it, it gets that user information, so it knows who this request is from. So let's stop with the theory over here. We're gonna move on towards the actual implementation now using PyJWT, and then we'll come back to the theory at the end of the video where we discuss uh, the technical details of how the server actually verifies the user. This is uh, how you install it, pip install pyjwt, and uh, you import it like this, and I have that comment in there just so that you don't think that I incorrectly typed this. Okay, you don't import pyjwt, you import the jwt, okay? Then you have a key, okay? Now again, this is something that is out of the scope of this tutorial, really. Um, 
you, what key you use is kind of up to you. You can go and randomly generate a key, kind of like like how you would gen randomly generate a password. Um, but I'm not really going to discuss this much. I'm going to make a separate video on it because I did take a look at how it could be done professionally and it's going to require a separate video. Okay, so I won't touch up on this right now. Again, this is the payload. I told you what to include here. Non-sensitive data and an expiry. Okay, you can also include other things like who issued it uh, and, you know, things like that based on your scenario. Then you do this. Okay, payload, key, and then an algorithm. There are different types of algorithms like RSA. You, you may have heard of this one. It's very popular. Uh, this is the one that I see commonly being used. So we'll go with this one. So you just do this and then I hate it when that happens. Okay, so you do this and here's our token, our JWT token. Just something interesting I'm, I'm going to point out about this. You see that there's uh, three dots in here, one dot, two dot, uh, wait, they're only supposed to be two dots, but it segments this into three parts. Okay, so part one, part two, and part three. Part one is the header. The header isn't here. Um, you can't see it over here because we've just used the default headers, but the uh, header basically contains this information. Okay, and I'll actually show you a sample header later on in this video. Okay, the second part is the encrypted payload. Okay, this is this encrypted payload over here. This third part over here is the signature. The signature is basically what the server or the backend uses to verify that your JWT is correct. To explain the next part of this video, you know, the te technical details behind how this is authenticated, how JWTs ensure authentication. I'm going to remove this and I'll explain why soon. Okay, so let me regenerate the token. Okay, and you know what? I need to keep things a bit clear, otherwise, you guys are, are going to get confused. Username, coder's legacy. Okay, I'll explain why I'm doing this. Okay, this is important. All right, so this one was generated using the username Coders Legacy. Okay, and you know what? Again, I just want to keep things very, very clear at this point. This is the critical stage for understanding this. And now I'm going to change the username to Hacker. All right, now, first of all, I want you to notice the fact that the payloads are different and the signatures are different. Okay, the signatures being different is the main thing. The payloads are pretty similar, but they are different. Okay, because of the same user ID, I guess, but the different username. At any rate, the signatures are different. Okay, this is the main part. Just remember this, that the changing the payload changes the signature. That's all you need to remember. Okay, because the signature is created by applying the secret key on the payload. Okay, you take this, apply it on this and a bunch of other things and you get this signature. Okay, now let me just clear this. So let's say that you are Quotus Legacy or I am Quotus Legacy and I send my payload or my whole token which contains the payload to the server. But while it's going there, a hacker catches it and he you know, changes the payload to hacker. So here's how this is going to work. The hacker has modified only the payload. Okay. Remember this fact, the signature, the original signature is still intact. And the reason the hacker can't modify the signature or regenerate it is because he doesn't have the key. Okay. Remember the hacker has not modified the signature. Okay. So what the server is going to do when it receives this hacked payload, it's going to regenerate the signature. Okay, so what was the original signature? Let's find out. I'll change this back to Coder's Legacy and then I'll copy this here. Okay, original signature. Now, when it regenerates the signature because it has received the modified payload, okay, and then when it recreates it, 
let me just do this this is the signature okay so this is the signature generated with modified payload this is what it gets and these are not similar I mean they have to be same they have to be the exact same for the user to be verified for the request that the user made to be verified and obviously these are not and if I change this back to coders legacy you're gonna no you're gonna notice that it's actually authentic see signature I mean there's no point in putting this here because it's the same signature signature generated using unmodified payload oh and I put pay loaf there Okay, so you can see how this works. So that's how this entire thing works. And the reason why this is so effective is because the hacker never has the secret key. The secret key which is used to generate this signature. That's why it's so important to keep this safe. You wouldn't even keep this here, as I think I mentioned this earlier in the video, maybe not, but you would like keep this in a separate file somewhere because uh, you don't want your key to actually be exposed within your code, okay? just in case. That's just an extra security precaution. So I hope you understood this. It's a pretty simple explanation. You can probably find a better one online with fancy graphics and all, but uh, this wasn't really the main point of my video. This was just the foundation I needed you guys to understand so we could proceed. So what I really kind of want to show you is how this would realistically look. Okay, so I paused the video for a, a moment and I opened up some files that I wrote beforehand. This is the crux of the video where we experience a real life interaction between a server and a client. This is our client file, client.py. Let's just close our old file. And here's our server.py file. Okay. It's written, uh, the server is written in fast API. It's a pretty popular library in Python for backends and yeah, pretty effective. So I have here two functions or two routes as you would call them. Okay, this is how they're being accessed, the localhost URL, because I'm running the server locally on my laptop, then the port, 8000, then I'm accessing the login URL, the login endpoint, basically, as it's formally called, and I'm passing in my username, okay? Realistically, I would be passing in both my username and my password, but I'm just trying to keep this very simple. So I log in using my username, and then in the server, this function runs, which is connected to that URL, it verifies the user, okay? And if it's not, again, this is a very simple implementation. Realistically, you would look up a, a database where you have all the user information. And if it's incorrect, you would just return an empty object. Otherwise, you proceed, if it's, if it's verified, you proceed, you generate a payload using that uh, username, using the user data. And then we generate a JWT token and return it back to the user. So that's what the user is going to be doing. Every time he's going to be making a request in the future, he's going to use the token that the server has returned to him upon his successful login. So this is where we, this is part two, basically, where we actually send a request to the server for some data. Okay, so this is the verify endpoint and we're sending in the token that we received from the server. Let's take a look at what function we have here at the verify endpoint, it takes the token as a parameter and then it decodes the JWT. Now this function, it's called decode, but it's actually decoding and verifying. So you can see from the catch statement here that if it's invalid, it's actually gonna, you know, it's gonna, it's, it's gonna cause an error. It can also ca cause an error when it's expired. So that's something to consider, okay? It returns an empty object if it's uh, if an error was thrown. Otherwise, it just returns the payload. Again, realistically, we would uh, return some information. Let's let's go ahead and do that. Okay, status is equal to two hundred. Okay, cool. That looks more real realistic. Two hundred meaning successful uh, request. So, I'm gonna run this code now. Okay, there you go. You see, token was printed out. The token that we received from the server and then we successfully requested data using the verify endpoint. And you can see status is equal to 200. 
Now, there's just one last thing to show you in this video. What happens if someone tries hacking it? Now, I can't exactly completely simulate a hacking experience over here, but what I'm gonna do in a very simple manner is come back here to our original file. I'm gonna run this code where we use the modified payload. I'm gonna copy this payload. Okay, I'm gonna put this here, modified payload. Then I'm going to change this back to the original token. Oh wait, no, we have the original token right here, right? So this is the original token. And then I'm gonna replace, so it's not the original token anymore actually, it's more like modified token. So I'm gonna take the modified payload that was generated when we changed the payload to hacker, and I'm gonna replace the original payload, which is exactly what a hacker would do. Then I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna go to client.py, and I'm gonna override, or let's just change the name, hacked token. Okay, and I'm gonna pass in the hacked token instead. Now let's see what happens. There we go. See, it is an empty object. It is not successful. And this is exactly what would happen if someone attempted to impersonate you or hack you or do anything really. So this is basically the crux of the video. Uh, that's it pretty much. There's other things that we can do. Honestly, there's more in this library than just uh, verification. There's things to improve user experience like refresh tokens and stuff. But we're gonna keep this till here in this video and we'll expand upon more advanced concepts in future videos. I do hope you are around to see them. Okay, so do subscribe to the channel, right? See you in the next video.